Hello. This is Sir David the Bard coming out of Australia, Kangaroo City, hiding from the Danites. And um, I'm hiding in a steak center. <laughs> and I know they're only used <laughs> once a week, so for six days I have a free place to lay under the sacrament table and uh, do my show. Anyway, I wanted to say, <laughs> the one lady, I can't remember names. I'm sorry, folks. I don't even know who the hell I am most of the time. Uh, Anna, I think, uh, said something about bear abuse. Now, let me let me tell you, <laughs> a bear on a ceiling fan is not abuse. If it goes slow, <laughs> you turn that sucker up, <laughs> and the bear does this, and then comes off and flies to Kentucky, that's... <laughs> That's abuse. So I just want to be straight with all of you that uh, abuse is when the bear flies four or five states away in the United States. Now, the other lady that said I should be a college teacher. I'm going to open the door. It's so hot in here. I'm locked in. Um, I, I can't remember your name. You're so sweet. You've been on here a thousand times and been with me from the beginning. Um Anyway, she said that I should be a college teacher. Well, my master's degree is in college teaching. And I love teaching. I love teaching. But I'm too far over the boundaries. I have found. Uh, yeah, you have academic freedom. <laughs> but where my freedom starts is where the university's uh, administration believes I should end. And um, I do love teaching. I taught a lot in the church. I was the elders quorum teacher for years and years in uh, Newberry Park, California. And, um, you know, she said she would be laughing her ass off in calculus. Well, that's not too hard. When I took calculus, I, I laughed my ass off, <laughs> and the professor wasn't even funny. I knew I was going to fail from the first damn day. <laughs> I went into a class at BYU, and I can't even remember what the class was. Something about analytical this or analytical that. And I sat down for like a half an hour, and I started hilariously laughing. I go, I'm never going to pass this, never. So I went out, and I dropped the class. Now, I said this once on another video, and I tried to be very careful never to repeat anything on a video that you got to go look for yourself if you want to hear original vi uh, videos. But um, I'm getting old <laughs> and slow. So I'm going to tell you, I took another class at BYU. And this is on another video somewhere out of the thousand. I don't know where. Uh, my memory is good that way. Uh, and it was called, um, oh, I forget, Reflective Dance. I was really into dance at BYU. Oh, God, I taught... Um, the uh, ballroom dancing I taught, um, um, social dance, and uh, Latin American dance. And I loved it. I loved teaching dance. I taught at Arthur Murray's for a year or so until I got fired there <laughs> for trying to teach outside the boundaries. Anyway, I thought this would be a good class to kind of supplement my um, uh, dancing education at BYU. So I walked in to the... Uh, uh, what do they call it down there? The something hall. Uh, field house hall. Yeah, it wasn't a field house. It was next to the field house. I opened the door. <laughs> There's like 200 girls in there. So I looked around and I said, this must be the celestial kingdom. <laughs> then the professor said, no, it ain't the celestial kingdom. Mr. Bard, get in line. <laughs> so I got in line with these 200 girls. And, and most of them were in tights. Now, my tights didn't look that good in those days. They look worse now. <laughs> so anyway, the teacher started playing this real weird uh, Asian or African, I don't know, it could have been uh, Muslim um, music. So somebody thought it was music. And she said to the class, <laughs> be a tree. Now, I look around and I see 200 bushes. <laughs> I didn't see any trees. All I could see were spiritual bushes. <laughs> so I thought, I'm not going to make it in this class. Those tights are too revealing. There ain't no trees in here. There's just bush. <laughs> so I hung my branches out like this, and then one branch down here to the girl beside me. <laughs> I said, are you being a bush? Let me see. <laughs> I left. I left. I, I told the teacher, I said, you know, 
this isn't what I thought it was. Uh, I wanted to have a class at BYU on Bush. <laughs> I've never seen it in the the catalog, but I keep looking. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's a class that I didn't take either. So I'm just bullshitting you today because my microphone is working. The bastard. You know what? I spent five days, five days, eight hours a day trying to fix this damn microphone. I went on YouTube and I and I listened to five or eight or fifteen different people telling me how to fix this microphone. None of them knew. None of them knew. Now let me tell you how to fix your YouTube microphone, whether it's on a webcam or it's on a stand. Let me tell you, it's easy. Go to your default settings. Click on Google Chrome. Don't click on Internet Explorer. YouTube cannot hear and read Internet Explorer anymore. It's Chrome. Click on it. The microphone comes up and it works and the Bard is not in a mental institution. Well, I am. They made this office look like I was still at home so I could be happy here. So anyway, anyway. Uh, if you're if you're looking for bush classes at BYU, you're going to have to find those on your own. Uh, that's what I did. I remember um, uh, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie. Oh, she's a cutie, little blonde girl, cute as could be. And uh, I drove her out. See, she's dead now, so I can say this shit. I'm sure she's dead. I'm sure she's dead. So I drove her out to um, Provo Lake. And, uh, you know, it's kind of dark out there and the moon and the stars. And so we're in the front seat of the car. And um, <laughs> we start making out. Well, now, I was a pretty decent LDS guy. I was a virgin uh, when I was married. Now, my hands weren't. <laughs> but my, my, my weenie was a virgin. <laughs> Mr. Weiner was a virgin. My hands, they had trophies. <laughs> At the at the uh, high school, you know, there were little trophies in the the trophy case. Uh, the bard's right finger, the bard's left. Anyway, so we started making out, and I guess she was just hot. I don't know because in those days, you know, I like making out and you know just fooling around a little bit because I was a BYU student. I didn't want to get uh, uh, excommunicated. Oh, God, I wish I had back in those days. It would have saved me a lifetime of suffering. But anyway, oh, Jackie, she got a little bit too hot. <laughs> and I told her, you know, cool down. Now, boys don't usually do that, but the bard is different. I don't want a baby, uh, and I don't want, uh, you know, illegitimate this. And uh, Mr. Weenie <laughs> was yelling, <laughs> stop, stop. So she wouldn't stop. Uh, this is funny shit. She wouldn't stop. And she's grabbing me and, and throwing herself down and wrapping her legs around me. Finally, I said, Jackie, you're out of here. And I opened her car side of the door, pushed her butt out on the, on the gravel at Provo Lake. She was so embarrassed, she cooled right off. And she got in and said, you need to take me home. And I said, you're right, I do. Now, that was, what am I getting into my sexual experiences for? Because it's the only thing I can remember, folks. I can't remember my name. But I remember her name, Jackie. Then I had a, a, a cute little gal at BYU. Her name was Linda. La, 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 Linda. All of you are too young. You don't know that damn song. But anyway, she was kind of cute. So I drove her <laughs> in the Provo Canyon up some damn road that no human being had ever been up before. And um, I, I had, in those days, now this is a long time ago, folks. In those days, this was ni I graduated in 1972, so it was like 68, 69, 70. And the only thing that we had were 8-track um, stereos. Well, you had to have, you know, a weightlifting arm to put it into the dashboard. Anyway, I was cool. I bought a record player that ran off the battery of the car. And I put it in the back window. Well, I thought that was pretty bitching until you drive and the road has bumps in it and the, and the damn thing flies all over the back seat. The record flies off. So I learned. I said, you know, you just, you know, I'm not 007. I'm 0007. <laughs> so I only played it when we were parked. So I put the music on and, you know, the moon's out there and the stars and the bards. I wasn't singing because I know that will drive them out of the car. So anyway, I put my arm around her 
and I started saying, you know, I guess with my body, let's make out. Well, Linda looked at me and she said, no way! <laughs> I go, that isn't the right response. <laughs> Do you hear the music? Do you see this car? I'm cool. She said, no, you're not. <laughs> I said, well, neither are you then. <laughs> so I drove her back to BYU. That was one of my failures right there. That was one of my failures. Now, I have to, I, this is on another piece of tape somewhere. And maybe I'm getting so old, I just have to repeat myself. I don't know. But anyway, um, there was another girl. What was her name? Um, I don't remember. It was between a divorce. And I met her over um, at one of the uh, off-campus um, places there at BYU. And, um, <laughs> oh, this one, <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. She was a cutie. And she knew what she was doing. I didn't. <laughs> I, I guess I did because I'd been married uh, uh, three or four years before that divorce. So, you know, I figured out intercourse all out the last two weeks of my four-year marriage. But anyway, um, she grabs me, and uh, we're going for it. This is the real thing. <laughs> this is the Joseph Smith, Sir David the Bard. <laughs> and I don't know how old she was. She was a BYU student. Well, anyway, um, at the last minute... Uh, Mr. Weenie says, I'm out of here. You don't want a baby. And she sits up and she goes, how did you know to, how to do that? And I well, I don't know, but he did. <laughs> so we, I kept it confidential. Well, I'll be damned. I went to uh, my bishop, the bastard, at BYU, and I, I confess, that's the way you're trained in the Mormon church. So I just sat back in the chair, and the weenie goes, yeah, we had a... And the weenie was confessing. I didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, you know, I was standing there trying to read the Book of Mormon while he's, uh, you know, looking at the bush. <laughs> he was doing more than looking at it. Anyway, I confessed to the bishop, and I said, you know, I want to come clean. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm looking for the next bush in my my dance class. Anyway, I thought it was confidential and private. God, I can't remember her name. It was only like a week that I, I happened to run into her at, on BYU campus, and she said, you're a real asshole. And I said, why? What what I do? I thought that was a pretty good time we had. She says, well, it was, but my bishop is excommunicating me. What would you tell my bishop for? I said, I didn't tell your bishop. I told my bishop. He said, well, your bishop must have told my bishop. There it is, folks. It's a cult. It's a cult over your genitalia. It's a cult over your genitalia. So uh, the, the weenie, you know, he, res he uh, not resided. He, uh, <laughs> what's the word? I hate it when I can't use my vocabulary. Receded. He receded into the body while I was talking to her because I knew he was going to get kicked. <laughs> so anyway, I felt bad. Uh, God, her name just starts to come to me. I want to say Gloria, but it's not Gloria. But anyway, uh, she got excommunicated, and uh, I didn't get anything. The church is equal. It teaches men and women the same bullshit. Bullshit. Um, let me see. Oh, I remember. Now, this is before... A vast <laughs> virus database has been updated. Yeah, that's Monson checking in on me, trying to hack me. Anyway, I remember just uh, my senior year before I went to uh, to BYU, um, I had a girlfriend, and she wasn't... Well, I don't want to be cruel on, on because she's still alive. <laughs> I had a girlfriend, and she was my best friend's girlfriend. Well, she decided to change to me because my best friend, he was better looking, but he was an idiot. So she changed to me. I was ugly, but I was smart. Anyway, we were making out uh, in my dad's um, Pontiac station wagon in her front yard, and it had quite a slope to the driveway. And so we're screwing around and screwing around. It's getting heavier and heavier. And pretty soon, um, you know, <laughs> I look out the window of my parked car. <laughs> I see the trees moving. <laughs> Holy shit, we're coasting. We're, she had kicked. <laughs> I hate it when, when women tear up my headliner with uh, high heels. I hate that. Well, this one didn't tear up the headliner. She kicked the car out of gear. And in those days, the gear shift was by the uh, steering wheel. So we're coasting in neutral <laughs> back out of her dad's driveway. And her dad was home. Well, I'm trying to sit up 
<laughs> trying to untangle the octopus that we've created. <laughs> Pants, panties, shoes, everything all over the place. I'm trying to get to the brake. And, and, of course, this car had power brakes, but in those days, power brakes didn't work much, uh, unless you had the engine running. Well, uh, the Bard, he's fast. <laughs> but the weenie was faster. <laughs> we slammed into a great big group of rocks and trees, and it sounded like a car accident, and it was at night. And so her dad, bless his heart, he's dead. <laughs> he comes running out of the, the house. What are you kids doing in that car? I said, well, sir, I was just backing up, but but I couldn't see the trees. <laughs> he said, Terry, get in the house. Okay. <laughs> Hair's all messed up. Panties hanging off her arm. <laughs> what have you been doing? <laughs> what do you think I've been doing, Dad? And I'm trying to get that car started. I'm out of there. I'm out of there. Dad's got the shotgun. So, um, anyway... Um, I, I, you know, I'm on this sexual thing. I don't know why. I haven't taken my meds today. Maybe that's why. The first night on my first wife that uh, we got married, we we got married down in uh, Centerville, Utah, or Centerfield, Utah. And I had to drive up to Salt Lake City, and it's long gone, the Hotel Utah. It used to be a beautiful, beautiful, magnificent hotel, and the Mormon Church has now changed it to the Joseph Smith building and all it does is have 14 year olds lined up outside I don't know what they do when they get in there but anyway we were going to the the uh, Hotel Utah and we were like three blocks from the Hotel Utah and her wedding dress was in the back and you know we're gonna go in there and to find out what life is really about and multiply and so anyway um, we came up to like the third red light before the the hotel and this guy pulls up to me and he goes, man, man, man. And I look over. It's a nerd. <laughs> and he wants to race me. I forget what car I had. Damn, I think I had my Z28 four-speed Hertz transmission, 302 engine and 300 horsepower. And stock, standard, had the competition stripe. And it was um, cherry. Um, oh, I don't know. It was a, like this color here. And I had the competition stripe on it. And I looked at my wife and I said, Hey, you know, I can beat this guy. She goes, No, 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 don't do it. <laughs> you know, that's what she started saying in sex the rest of the years we were married. <laughs> so she was practicing right there. Well, anyway, the light turned green. Son of a bitch. We both came off the line like it was a drag race at, at a, a, a drag strip. And he's burning rubber, I'm burning forever. <laughs> I never shifted. That that Z28 could go 40 miles an hour uh, in low gear. And we got up to the next light. And yeah, I beat him by about five or six feet. And I look in my mirror and here's the red lights of three highway patrol cars. Some were highway patrol, some were just regular uh, uh, Salt Lake City police. And so <laughs> one comes up to my window and he says, do you know why I'm stopping you? And I said, well, I'm not sure, but you could give me a hint. <laughs> so bitch. He said, I see the wedding dress in the back seat. I assume that's not yours. And I said, no, this isn't 2012. It's like 1970 or 69 or 70. He said, you just get married? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, well, how would you like to spend your wedding night in jail? Now, you know... It doesn't take me long to make some decisions. Some decisions I take some time with. But this one I go, no, <laughs> she can't come, can she? <laughs> no, I go, no, I don't want to be there. He says, you slow down and you stop this crap right now. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I bowed my head and said, yes, sir. So we got up to the uh, Hotel Utah. Now, this is a little farm girl. And I don't know, I'm weird. I, I tell shit that the rest of you, you all listen to, but you won't say it. It's because I'm mentally ill. So we get into the motel room, and, you know, I'm just kind of being cool, laying on the bed in my clothes and everything, and, and she goes into the bathroom, and then she comes out uh, dressed like a whore. <laughs> now, this is a girl that played the piano in every um, um, sacrament meeting and every state conference in her ward, and she was also um, at, at BYU, and she was extremely conservative and cute and sweet. You know, she was the, the um, assistant dance uh, director of the ballroom dance team. So, anyway, um, I'm just laying there, and she comes out like a whore. 
Now, I haven't been with a lot of whores. In fact, this was my first one. <laughs> so, I looked a little stupid. I said, well, you know, what are you doing? You know, what do you think I'm doing? I said, I'm not sure, but that's why I asked the question. <laughs> so she gets into bed. She starts ripping my clothes off. Now, I'm kind of a conservative guy. I'm not anymore. God, you know, I don't even have pants. I mean, I have underwear. I put no pants on. I, I never wear pants anymore, except when I go outside. And my daughter, Allison, says, Dad, put your pants on. You're going to embarrass me. I go, okay. So anyway, she rips my clothes off of me. And uh, we, we jump into bed there, both uh, naked. And um, I didn't know what to do. Uh, you know, I was used to um, the, the Mormon sarin gas that was in my head that, you know, this was immoral, illegal, and that I was going to hell for this. Well, she wasn't. <laughs> God, this little girl was hot as, as a firecracker. She jumped around like a fish that just got pulled out of the ocean, kind of like a, a, a shark pulled up on the beach. And I'm sitting there trying to, 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 to wade my way through this, you know, because I thought, well, I'm the priesthood and the penis holder. <laughs> but I wasn't. She was the penis holder. So anyway, this is Monson trying to call now and tell me. I know it is. Hold on a second. I see. as soon as I say Monson, they don't call anymore. They don't call anymore. They know I'm on the... Oh, he's calling back. He's watching. He's watching, and he wants to excommunicate me for these behaviors uh, at BYU. Hold on. Let me, let me check. I think it's Monson. No. Monson hung up. So, anyway, she was a terror. And um, she wasn't always that way. You know, it's funny. After women have babies, uh, they're more inclined to be, uh, you know, I'm not interested as much, and i got to go get the baby, and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so anyway, that's my, uh, my first wife experience. And, um, and she was a virgin, and <laughs> so was I. My hymen didn't break, <laughs> but <laughs> some do and some don't. So I'll, I'll report to you later. This video is getting too long, but I, I'll go through the rest of <laughs> my sexual adventures of the bard. Thank you.